Welcome back to Stratford Hall. Today I'm standing in the formal parlor. But in the 1700s and 1800s, this space would have been called the drawing room. The drawing room is one of multiple public spaces inside of the household that the Lees would have used when entertaining guests. And the furnishings of this space would have been a direct reflection of the family's wealth and status. What you see represented here today is the drawing room of Light Horse Harry Lee and his second wife, Anne Hill Carter, dating to about 1795. The green paint you see on the walls is the exact shade and composition that Harry and Anne would have had in this room in the 1790s. It's called verdigris paint and historically was made by applying acid to copper plates to create oxidization. The oxidization was then scraped from the plate and ground by hand and mixed with linseed oil to produce a paint. The paint was then applied to the walls using circular brushes to create the modeled appearance you see replicated here. You might also notice that this room has wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. That's something that we learned during our restoration process when we found tack marks all around the perimeter of the drawing room. The carpet you see here is a reproduction and was woven on historic looms by the Groff, Snur, and Wilton Company. The purple color in the carpet would have been a sign of wealth and was commonly paired with verdigris paint. You might notice the paintings on the back wall. To the far left is a portrait of Light Horse Harry Lee, Robert E. Lee's father, that is attributed to the painter Gilbert Stewart. To the far right is a portrait of the Marquis de Lafayette, the famous Frenchman who fought during the American Revolution on the side of the colonist. And in the center is a painting of William Pitt, the first Earl of Chatham, who was a member of British Parliament in the 1750s. That painting was commissioned by Richard Henry Lee and several men in Westmoreland County. If you're interested in the story involving that painting, then be on the lookout for more videos to come. In the corner of the room is the pianoforte. The pianoforte became increasingly popular in the late 17 and early 1800s and replaced the harpsichord. Instruments like the pianoforte and the harpsichord were considered status symbols and also showcase pieces because they allowed the family to show off their sons and daughters to guests. It was not uncommon for wealthy young men and young women to learn how to play an instrument as part of their well-rounded education. And the Lees were known to hire music masters to teach their sons and daughters how to play the pianoforte or the harpsichord. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be on the lookout for more videos to come.